All right, uh, third trip to North Korea for this guy. I guess the fourth one is free. Uh, but Mike Pompeo heading back to North Korea. Uh, no doubt to check out these uh, intelligence reports that we're getting that show that the North Koreans haven't entirely given up uh, on their nuclear ambitions. That at least was the original read from looking at a nuclear plant that seemed to be getting beefed up and another facility where they said something similar. Let's get the read on this, how significant it is or is not, from former intelligence officer and Iraq war veteran Don Bramer. Uh, Don, always good to have you. Um, what do you make of these developments and the timing of Pompeo's trip? Well, if you look at the timing, I mean, this is almost a duplicate of what we saw in the 1980s under the pre preceding the INF Treaty. You know, there were there were six meetings from 1981 to 1983 that lasted almost two months long before we ever got to a point where the president came in. So for us to think that all this is going to happen and we're going to completely go through the complicated process of denuclearization after one meeting it is ridiculous. Probably, um, that's, a, that's a very valid point just to sort of step back and, and be realistic. But a lot of folks are, are concerned, Don, that the president might be trusting the North Koreans too much, that, that it, despite some of this intelligence coming in, that they might not be doing everything they say. He still is saying very good things about the North Korean leader. And maybe that's perfectly valid and they've struck a chemistry and a unique rapport. But um, what would you be telling the president if you were advising him on these latest developments? Well, I think that when it comes to boasting, which we know that is something that's quite popular in this administration, we might want to lower that rhetoric down a little bit. You know, since we were talking about uh, Reykjavik a little bit earlier, what was the biggest thing we learned is a little bit of trust but verify. And I think that's something that we need to keep in mind as we move forward with these talks. You know, the Secretary of State's got a hard road ahead of him. Um, you know, IMF was considered a disaster in 1986. And look where that put us at the end of 1987. That's a very good point. I'd forgotten that. You know, another thing, you mentioned Reykjavik and Ronald Reagan. That, he walked away from that uh, when they snuck in that demand that the president scrap his, uh, you know, the space defense plans. Uh, so he just walked away. Now, they ultimately were able to cobble together an agreement many months later, but it took time, again, to your earlier point. How long do you think this process goes? You know, I think before we see any really strong progress uh, with the secretary's talks and, and probably many other trips ab abroad for negotiation, that we're looking at a year from now, just at a minimum, before we can lay out a good, strong plan. And then we have to go through the process of doing the dismantling, which, you know, could take another year in itself. And that's similar to the, the timeline that we saw previously. Do you think that uh, Secretary of State Pompeo is on the same page as the president on this, that, he, that he's maybe worried? That the defense secretary, Jim Mattis, is worried. Um, what do you think? Well, we have a president who does not follow conventional uh, strategy when it comes to politics. And we have some very good thinkers with uh, Mr. Bolton and Secretary Mattis and Secretary Pompeo. So I think we're going to let cooler heads prevail here. I think, you know, the one thing we've seen with this president is that while he tends to come forward and, and speak fast, when it all comes down to it, he will listen to his advisors and the secretaries around him. And I'd like to believe that that's where we're going to go here. Don Bramer, thank you very, very much for your service to the country. Uh, have a happy fourth.